I hope you will enjoy this week's lecture. It's brought to you uh, from George uh, Shugiai, and he did a really nice job um, lecturing about what school-wide uh, PBS is, and um, I thought this would be a really great lecture for you to hear. So enjoy. Welcome and greetings from the University of Connecticut and from the United States. This is quite the honor to have this opportunity to address you. Uh, it's quite of a, a different kind of experience to present a keynote through the context of video, but this, I think it'll be kind of fun to see how you can take the content and work with it. First, before I begin, I'd like to thank uh, Ian and Brian and Judy and our local person here, Matt, who's made this uh, kind of video presentation possible. It's quite a, a number of people who need to get together to try to pull this off, and I appreciate all their support in making this work. I also wanted to, uh, before I start, indicate to you that you can get uh, access to much of the content that I want to describe for you, as well as the PowerPoints and some of the supporting materials if you go to pbis.org and also to cber.org, that's cber.org. Both of those sites have libraries where we store our presentations and you're more than welcome to go there and look at the presentation as well as get access to some of the materials. So given that little startup point, I also mentioned to you that there will be some handouts that Ian and others have for you, and you can pick those up if you'd like. But they're, again, they're available online. So let's get started. I'm going to talk at you for about 30 minutes or so. I've got some material that I want to try to share with you to communicate some big ideas around what is positive behavioral support. And uh, at the end, I've got three questions that I've been asked to respond to. And in all, in all it'll take about 35 or 40 minutes. So we'll see how this works. I uh, first want to indicate to you that the, really the purpose of this presentation, or what Ian and, and Brian asked me to do, is to describe a little bit about what is school-wide positive behavioral support and what are the main principles and characteristics that define what we do. So I'm going to focus on that particular topic as we go through the content. Now what I'd like to do to get started is to give you an example of one school just to show you what it means to address the issues around discipline and behavior inside our schools. This is a school that's grades or year 7 through 12, what we call intermediate in high school here in the States, and they had 880 students in this particular school. In one school year, they had 5,100 office discipline referrals, and that's 5,100 times a student was um, written up for violating a local school um, rule or standard. Nearly two-thirds of those 800 kids had made at least one trip to the office. And that's a lot of disciplinary action going on inside this school. And that's an important context for us to think about because the work that I do in the world of behavioral support tries to address the challenges associated with that particular problem. Let me show you another way to think about those 5,100 referrals. And let's just assume that it takes an administrator or a school principal or a school master 15 minutes to process each one of those events. That's equal to 76,000 minutes in a school year that was spent handling problem behavior inside the school. Let's assume then again also that it takes, there is an eight, six to eight hour school day. If you equate that to the amount of time spent processing referrals, that's 159 days of time that the administration spent processing office discipline referrals inside this school. That is a significant amount of instructional time that's taken from this school. And if we're interested in trying to improve academic outcomes, we've really got to pay attention to the time we're spending managing behaviors. The real message behind this is that context matters. If we're going to focus on behavioral issues, you really got to think big about the school-wide climate as well as the classroom climate. So the big idea is the following. Two school psychologists call the problem really the issue of trying to build host environments that support all kids. A host environment is that experience you have when you walk down the hallways, if you walk through classrooms as you visit schools. And the work that we do is trying to create host environments that have four or five very important characteristics. They need to be effective, they have to be efficient, they have to be relevant, they need to be durable, and they have to be scalable. And the, really the fast way to think about that is that we need to be thinking about schools that put in place interventions, both academic and behavioral, that really do produce the desired outcomes we want. That's what we mean by evidence-based practices. They really do produce those important outcomes. 
The second thing you need to know about what we do in the behavioral support world is whatever we ask schools to do, it's got to be efficient, which means that it's got to be doable. Real, real people have to be able to have the capacity to implement these practices because if it's too difficult, too time consuming, we're going to lose the impact of our interventions. The third piece is it's got to be relevant. What that really means is we've got to pay attention to the local culture, the local context. What is the language of the community? What are the cultural features of the families that send kids to our school? What are the cultural norms that make up the faculty uh, that provide the instruction for our students? Fourth, these interventions that we put in place, these school-wide positive behavioral supports, need to be durable. They've got to last. What we find is that many interventions only have about a six to eight month kind of time span on them, and then we start wandering away from accurate implementation. So we know it's very important that we stick with these interventions that we know have some uh, likelihood of working. And the last one is scalable, which that really means is if it works in one classroom, can we take that effective intervention and move it to another classroom? Or if you're a district level person, which is what many of you in this audience are, can we take it from one school and transport it to another school? So when we think about host environments that work well, they have those five important features, which are they're effective, they're efficient, they're durable, they're relevant, and they're scalable. Now, if you take that logic a little further, let me get really more specific about the kinds of issues that we address in the work that we do in school-wide behavioral support. The bottom line is we really want to maximize academic engagement and maximize academic achievement. That's our real goal. We want kids to be able to read, to do their math, to be able to learn physics, to know the second language, to be able to do art and music and physical education and so forth. But to do that well, those four circles above have to be addressed. And that's what we do in our work at our center as well as what this topic, this conversation is about. And that is we've really got to decrease the amount of reactive management. The yelling, screaming, the punishers, the averses that we use to try to stop misbehavior. Not that we shouldn't have consequences for rule, rule violations, we need those. But when we overuse those, we cr create environments that are not positive host environments, but instead are negative host environments. The se second critical feature about what we need to attend to if we're going to maximize our academic achievement is to make sure that we integrate academic and behavioral initiatives together. Uh, good classroom management is not in isolation of good instructional management. They go together. And without having one, um, without having them combined, we, we fail to be able to produce maximum outcomes, which is why we want to blend these academic and behavioral initiatives together. The third thing that's important about getting to those max, uh, maximizing academic engagement is making sure that we improve classroom and school-wide climates. If the climates in which kids have to learn are negative and aversive, we're going to minimize the kinds of academic outcomes that we have. And that's true of early elementary years as well as at the high school level. Now the last one, which is my area of, of real strong interest or my area of specialty if I have one, is working with kids with serious emotional behavioral disorders. What do we do with kids who have significant challenges in the mental health world as well as in their behavioral success? To work with individual kids, we've got to make sure that the larger host environment is working well, which is part of the message that I was communicating earlier. Now, I want you to understand that before we start talking about what is behavioral support specifically, that what most of the work that we do is linked to what we like to call evidence-based practices or research. We started out at our center looking at what does the research say about minimizing or decreasing or preventing violent behavior or antisocial behavior. And the research is very clear. If you want to create environments that work well, that are safe, that are respectful, that are responsible, it's really important that we think about these five or six characteristics. One is you've got to think big. The larger school climate has to be one that's positive. Second, you've got to make sure that we invest in high levels of academic and behavioral success. When kids are academically successful, they're more likely to behave better and our environments are more proactive. We also know that we've got to increase our emphasis on teaching social skills directly. Somehow we think that social skills are inherited or shaped over time, but in fact what we've learned is that you've got to teach them just like you teach math, just like you teach physics. We also know from that literature about effective schools is that there's high levels of active supervision by the adults over kid behavior. And we know that that active supervision is positive and we've spent time acknowledging kids for doing things the right way. Very important feature about our schools that all staff need to be alert and be positively interacting with their students. 
The last two are, are dealing more with the adult side, which is the adults have to model what we want kids to be able to do. What we've learned across K through 12, kindergarten through 12th grade, year 12, is that the adults have to be able to demonstrate what we want the kids to be able to do in order for the kids to value those particular skills. And the last one is changing school environments is not an easy task. It's a multi-component, multi-year effort. It's not something you can do in a one-shot in-service or one professional development day. It's going to be something that takes multiple years with multiple elements that make up that effort. Moving forward a little bit further, this is where the, the meat of this conversation is about, which is really what is school-wide positive behavioral support? And I want to demystify it first for you and to make sure that you understand that school-wide behavioral support is really a framework for making good decisions and problem solving around improving how we support kids on the academic and behavioral side. It's important to remember that school-wide behavioral support is not an intervention, it's not a curriculum, it's not a program. It's not something you can buy in a three-ring binder in a box. It's really a framework by which we do business. What is the business? It's about selecting, it's about implementing scientifically based interventions. Those behavioral interventions, those academic programs that we know to be effective. I would argue that we have 30 or 40 years of knowledge about what are effective interventions. What we don't have is a good science by which we organize those interventions in a way that maximizes their impact, which is really the framework that I'm trying to describe for you. So school-wide behavioral support is really a framework or a logic by which we do business around academic and behavioral programs. And that's an important message for you because it's about all students as well as individual kids.